And if the B-17 was such a powerful bomber, why did the U.S. Army Air Forces push forward to develop the B-29 Star Fortress to finish the war? Hello guys and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the B-17 Flying Fortress, which was a bomber that was so tough, so reliable, that it even ended in a flying fortress. So guys, without any further ado, let's get started. The B-17 Flying Fortress is an American 4-engine heavy bomber aircraft which was developed by Boeing in the 1930s for the United States Army Air Corps. And the B-17 is famous for dropping more bombs than any other aircraft during the war. Behind the American 4-engine consolidated B-20 Polybrator and the German Water Road Twin Engine Jankers Ju-88 the B-17 was the most produced bomber of all time, with a total number of 12,731 units built by Boeing. Since the B-17 had multiple production variants, we we'll focus on its final version, the B-17G, which was the final variant of the B-17s. The final production model B-17G measured 74 feet 9 inches in length, with a 103 feet 9 inches in wingspan and stood 19 feet 1 inch on its landing gear. The bomber also featured a stressed king design with its aluminum alloy frame which struck a balance between lightweight efficiency and battlefield ruggedness except for the control surfaces which are made of fabric. Four a cooled 9 cylinder right R1820 cyclone radial engines each equipped with a two-stage supercharger located beneath the engines provided propulsion for the B-17 and think of that supercharger as a little air pump on its engine which kind of like squashes extra air into the engine so it can make the engines even produce power when air gets thin at high altitude. Each engine produced 1200 horsepower allowing the aircraft to reach a top speed of 287 miles per hour and climbed to its desired altitude of about 5,000 feet in 35 to 40 minutes, depending on the weight and conditions of the aircraft. When empty, the B-17 weighed about 36,000 pounds and when fully loaded, takeoff weight stopped to about 65,000 pounds and that's 29,700 kilograms. Operating just below the common altitude of modern airplanes, B-17 increased at a speed of 170 to 180 miles per hour and could fly a range of 2,000 miles with a standard wartime bomb load. The B-17 also carried its fuel in a self sealing tank built right into the wings with both primary and backup cells. And this was like a clever protective mechanism which was vital for staying aloft over enemy territory because when the tanks are hit, they would automatically see or heal themselves to reduce leaks and fire outbreaks. Now let's look at how the B-17G's onboard systems were powered. Hydraulics operated key components like the wheel brakes and engine car flaps, while electricity handled things like the landing gear, tail wheel, wing flaps, bomb bay doors, and even the powered gun turrets, while most of the other aircraft's instruments relied on electrical power. Now here is the scary part of the flying fortress. The B-17 was packed with 13 Browning M2.50 caliber machine guns in the nose, tail, dorsal, ventral and waist positions, each capable of 13 rounds per second. And this was how the B-17 got its name Flying Fortress when a CL2 reporter dubbed it as a flying fortress in disguise after seeing the number of machine guns which were sticking out from the aircraft. The B-17's bomb may held up to 8,000 pounds of fragment head bombs and could also carry extra 2,000 pounds under each wing, making it a total of 4,000 pounds under both wings. And what that means is that in a maximum load setup, a B-17G could haul 8,000 pounds internally plus 4,000 pounds under the wings, giving a 12,000 pounds total. Of course, hanging bombs on the wings cut into the plane's range axiom so it was only used when targets were close by but that wasn't even enough in combat so these configurations were used on very rare occasions that's if they were even used 
Stepping into the D-17G's flight deck, it find the pilot and co-pilot seated side by side behind an armored in shoot, surrounded by rows of analog gauges, switches and circuit breakers, which every instrument played a vital role for controlling pharmacy radio engines. Just behind them, the flight engineer monitored engine's performance and manned the top-mounted dorsal turret, ready to engage enemy fighters. Up front, the bombardier and navigator sat behind the proof plexiglass windows in the nose, giving them clear visibility and vital protection from enemy fire. Between their stations sat the northern bomb site, an optical marvel that provided unprecedented high altitude accuracy, essential for precision daylight rate, which the D-17 was known for. In all, a 10-man crew held the fate of its mission on their hands, and thus the pilot and the co-pilot each flew and navigated the bomber. In tight formations, the bombardier, which operated the northern side, and the remote control chain turret, a navigator which charted the course and doubled as the chief gunner went under attack, a flight engineer or top gun turret which kept the engines in check and defended from above, the radio operator which maintained communications with other aircraft and base, the bore turret gunner which was crammed into a spherical turret beneath the aircraft to guide the belly, and two waste gunners which covered the meat section flank and lastly the tail gunner which protected the vulnerable rear. So which role about the B-17 do you think was truly the toughest? Let me hear answers in the comment section. Finally, to survive sub-zero temperatures and change air at 25,000 feet, um, each crew members wore electrically heated suits, gloves and boots. And since the aircraft wasn't pressurized, the crew members also had to put on an oxygen mask for high altitude missions. In conclusion, the B-17 wasn't just a metal and machine, it was a flying symbol of courage. Time and time again, crew members flew into enemy fire, watched their friends fall, yet they pressed on. Some came back riddled with holes, missing engines or drilling smoke, but regardless, they still came back. Also, every time, these bombers proved that courage and grit could be forged into aluminium. That's why the B-17 wasn't just called a flying fortress, it aimed that name. It stood for resilience, grit, and the unbreakable will of those who flew it. Thank you guys and see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.